Good afternoon and good night again from the Changing Transport Showtime. This is now the fourth day of the Transport and Climate Change Week, and we are welcoming you for the last time actually already to the Changing Transport Showtime at this hour. We're currently transmitting live from Berlin. It's 8 a.m. Uh, my name is Nadja Tega. I am a junior advisor on transport and climate change, and as always almost, I, I'm here with my colleague Ernesto Feilbogen, who is a project manager on urban mobility and energy. So as I said, this is coming to an end. Uh, it was a lot of fun. We've been trying to be the knot for you that keeps the program together uh, from Asia to Africa, to Europe and to Latin America and, uh, well, make it a little bit round for you. Um, we've been trying to paint a colorful picture of uh, transport uh, all over the world. And um, it was a really fun experience. Uh, for me, this was the first time in a real studio, the first time in front of cameras. Quite daunting, I must say, in the beginning. But now uh, I can say it was a lot of fun and we really hope it was a lot of fun for you too. There will be one last show time uh, this afternoon, so um, make sure to tune in if you can. Uh, now I would like to know from my colleague Ernesto, how do you feel about this being the last time? Good morning, Nadia. Good morning, all the friends that join us once more in this show time. Well, I must say it was quite an interesting experience, Some, something new to be here, talking, camera lights, people running quite an experience. We try to do our best. We enjoy, I hope you do enjoy joining every day in the morning and in the afternoon in this Transport and Climate Change Week showtime session. Again, the Transport and Climate Change Week is organized by the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit, GZ, on behalf of the Federal Ministry of Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety and is financed by the International Climate Initiative. We are running in the Thursday, which is one day more tomorrow, and we want to show with you some numbers. We always try to share with you the slide that tell us what are the numbers of this transport week, and we try to update at least two figures that we are collecting. Of course, we are talking always fourth edition, five days full of knowledge, knowledge exchange, more than 200 speakers, three ways of joining on site, virtually live on demand, more than 20 countries, 13 time zones. And look at this yellow figure 1,400 and perhaps more participants, active participants that were giving impression that were assisting to the different events and programs, and more than 80, 80 hours of the program. That is amazing. So we feel like a good impression that the people is following us. Thank you, Ernesto. Um, for the ones that have not been attending the showtime before, let me wrap it up very quickly for you. Uh, the Changing Transport Showtime is our uh, morning TV show or afternoon TV show for those uh, in a different time zone. And uh, well, as I said before, we are trying to, uh, to paint a bright picture of uh, all the different uh, impressions that the transport sector can give you when you look all over the world. We are commu uh, combining country inputs, so we ask the participating countries to record uh, a video about their transport sector and submit that to us. We also reached out to uh, international organizations, to NGOs, to academia and ask them uh, to pitch their <coughs> ideas, to show us their innovations, to share with you the newest uh, well, ideas about transport. And then um, we come now uh, to the poll of the day. That is what we uh, have been doing for the last two days. Um, you can go, if you, if you are watching the live stream, you will see the, the chat window. And right next to it, there is a tab that says poll. You can click there and uh, check out the poll of the day. We are asking you now in the beginning, and we will have a look later at the results. And uh, the question of today is, what do you think, how will the transport sector look like after this uh, COVID-19 pandemic is over? Do you think we will change uh, for the better? Uh, you think it maybe even be less sustainable? Or you think it just remains the same or we go back to the old normal? Um, something that I also want to add is uh, that on the platform where you find this poll, we also added a, f a survey. Uh, we want to know what you think about the Changing Transport Showtime. Did you enjoy it? Are there things that you would like to see improved? Because maybe we get to do this again next year. Who knows? 
And uh, on the platform, we also, of course, have different uh, other, other things, other features um, that I would like to emphasize here once more. We have the matchmaking function. We also um, have the, the mov mobility movies theater, where you can watch all those country presentations and a couple of other videos. And um, we are, of course, active beyond uh, our platform. We also have uh, the a LinkedIn account and a Twitter account. If you use, um, if you look for changing transport on LinkedIn, you'll see um, you'll see our page there, and also on Twitter, where the handle is GIZ Transport. Um, now, something I forgot right now. I'm sorry. We also have a quiz for you, um, Ernesto. What is the quiz about? Quiz time. Quiz segment. We'll ask us some things that we will try to see the answer because it's right away there. And the quiz for today, something we need to fix there, is the most commonly named mitigation measure in the second round of the NDC. Again, what is the most commonly named mitigation measure in the second round of NDC? First option, public transport improvement, electric mobility, active mobility, use of alternative fuels. There is the right answer, let's say one, two, three, and we have the right answer. Exactly. Electric mobility is the most commonly named mitigation measure in the second round. We have a second quiz to share, and this is in order to reach the goal of Paris Agreement, transport emission must remain the same, decline by 50% from current levels, or decline 75% from current level. Contribution of transport remain the same, Decline 50%, decline 75%. What is your thinking about this? We can see the answer now. The last one, 75% are coming again. You can see now in the screen. Decline by 75% from current levels. And now that we went through the quiz, it is a moment to speak about the college that work with us. But first, we want to uh, show you a little video, uh, only 20 seconds, to give you a little bit of a glimpse behind the scenes. It's part of the call. Tell them. Uh, yeah. So here you see uh, the backstage area. Here you see us. That was yesterday. We were uh, recording the showtime, actually. And that is uh, where the magic happens. This is where uh, the Zendeberg company sits and helps us to bring all this together. Uh, you see lots of people are involved uh, in bringing this together and making, uh, well, this show possible, but all the rest of the Transport and Climate Change Week as well. And um, that is actually a good moment to, t to thank all those people that don't stand here on stage, like Ernesto and I do, but are tirelessly working behind the scenes. And here you see a couple of faces. This is the event support team. They stand started out as interns a half a year ago, a couple of months ago, and turned out to be uh, amazing conference managers. They all had different roles, but fulfilled them perfectly, worked, uh, well, tirelessly, uh, crazy over hours in the last few days. So a very, very, very big thank you goes out to them. Without them, this would definitely not be possible. And we have further colleagues, of course that support our core team. Those are Julia Remas. She works on, uh, well, the program and communication support. She basically uh, created the structure of the platform and is, uh, well, taking care of the website, has been in touch with you, maybe. And then we have uh, Mirjam Bosbach, who also for six months supported uh, this in, in, uh, in program management and communications. And we have Ute Peters, who is, uh, well, the, our fairy who makes sure that, uh, well, the, everything runs smoothly, provides um, a little bit of, uh, I don't know, relaxation and comforting words when things get hectic. So a big, big thank you to the three of, the, of, the three of them. And we come, uh, well, to the core team. Yeah, everybody has a head, every team has coordination. And now we need to thank Friedel, Jana and Valerie. Those are the guys with the other we already mentioned that have been dreaming, thinking, joking only about Transport and Climate Change Week during the last year and perhaps a little bit more. They will, have a, they will have a rest after this Friday session, we hope. And now it's time to invite, as usually we do every showtime, our colleague Daniel Bongard. Let's make a bit of space. We'll take our new position. Daniel, very welcome to the stage again. 
And you will see this is the last edition in the morning, show time. You can tell us, as usual, what happened yesterday, what is going to happen today, how do you feel about the show time, the format, the structure, the way you participate, we conduct you, we ask you many things. Go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Ernesto and Nadia. Uh, good morning and good uh, day to everybody. Uh, yeah, what happened since yesterday, at least, uh, I think I lost some hair. If you see me every day, uh, you will observe that I have uh, fewer today. Uh, I think it uh, really uh, was fascinating. And maybe one thing I haven't told you about is uh, that uh, what's going on in social media. I've checked this morning the hashtag Transport Week 21. And uh, it's really fascinating to see from all around the world all the colleagues who are, who are going around. And uh, so, yeah, we have this word cloud again. And uh, I think it's uh, quite nice to see something. And the shift day yesterday, uh, uh, we were especially looking at the expert clinics. But maybe in addition to this, the expert clinics have been quite successful. There has been some other events as well. For example, we had the launch of a women's network in Asia. Or we had several regional events this morning already, so they just happened. One was together with UN Environment on electric two- and three-wheelers, and the other one was in India uh, on grid integration for charging infrastructure. And I think this has been really successful. And so we are not the beginning of the Transport Week today. It's already ongoing. Sounds good. Then, showtime session. How do you feel about this? It's going to be happening next edition. I am sure it will. Perhaps we are not here. Other <laughs> colleagues take the responsibility. I uh, think we must uh, have you here. <laughs> and definitely, uh, yeah, the uh, next uh, Transport Week will come up. So uh, the sponsor of the Transport Week, the Federal Ministry of Environment in Germany, already uh, agreed to finance the next Transport Week. Uh, we have not yet defined the date, but definitely you all are welcome back here in Berlin to, uh, yeah, uh, establish peer learning, establish networks, and uh, get uh, together uh, with friends and colleagues and transform transport. Sounds great. So uh, have a look out for, uh, for our social media accounts um, to see uh, more about the new Transport and Climate Change Week uh, next year, the fifth edition. I'm sure we'll announce something on that very, very uh, shortly. But uh, now let's continue because we're still here, right? It's still a changing transport showtime and this is about uh, country presentations and inputs from organizations. So let's travel all the way to China and see what they prepared for us. Over the last few decades, economic development and urbanization have led to the growth in China's urban population and a massive expansion of the country's transport infrastructure. This development has been accompanied by an increase in car ownership and passenger and freight transport, and also by a number of challenges. 城市交通拥堵，空气污染，这是大城市普遍存在的一个问题。其实也是全球性的一个问题。中国正处于一个快速的一个城镇化发展的过程当中，城镇化的发展同时就会带来这个交通需求的一个增长。Transport is also a major contributor to climate change. In China, the transport sector accounts for about 10% of total carbon dioxide emissions. Transport是全球气候变化这个各国城市在建立可持续交通系统和气候友好型的交通出行方面上面临着巨大的压力。中国政府呢提出来，在2030年前要达到碳达峰，并在2060年努力实现碳中和这样的目标。to reach these goals, transport must become more sustainable. As a federally owned company, the Deutsche Gesellschaft für Internationale Zusammenarbeit has been working in China for more than 40 years and is committed to contributing to the country's sustainable development. In the transport sector, we are currently implementing projects to assist the sustainable transformation of China from many various angles including climate protection, alignment of the sector with international practices and standards, and exchanges about industry and trade matters. On behalf of the German Federal Ministry for the Environment, Nature Conservation and Nuclear Safety, we support the Chinese Ministry of Transport 
and the Ministry of Ecology and Environment in the climate-friendly development of the transport sector in China. Our goal is to bring transport and mobility on the low-carbon track in order to achieve the 2030 CO2 emission peaking and 2060 carbon neutrality targets. In the Chinese Republic of China, the NDCTIA program of the National Environment Agency helps China in the country's economic and in the southern China state to design a transportation system and air pollution reduction strategy. We support the transportation industry in making the contributions of the NDC and the development of China. Together with the MOT and our Chinese and international partners, we conduct joint research and pilot projects in the field of electromobility, sustainable urban mobility planning, new mobility services and intermodal transport. The concept of mobility as a service is an efficient and convenient solution to better integrate new mobility services such as ride-hailing services or smart bike sharing with traditional public transport services. The China Academy of Transportation Sciences and the GIZ Sino-German Cooperation on Low Carbon Transport Project are jointly developing a guiding policy framework for the sustainable development of mass in China. 我们可以通过合作，呃，学习德国以及这个欧洲发达国家在城市交通可持续发展方面的一个经验。In particular, the promotion of cycling and walking is widely considered as key to make urban transport and the cities as whole more sustainable and livable. 那么我们现在呢，一个是希望能够推动中国建立一个叫慢行交通的一个联盟。把中国的这个城市的决策者主要的这个产业主要的这个推动的机构能够形成一起形成一个合力然后呢把欧洲的经验介绍给中国人推动中国在政策层面上城市的决策者能够重视这一块的工作希望能够做一个叫慢行交通
mobility as a service was also there, and connect public urban transport with active mobility. Learn from the experience, learn from each other experience, the exchange. This is something both government, China, and also Germany acknowledge. We need to work together and learn together. Now it's time to introduce a guest we have in the stage. We are talking about Christian Larsen from City Lab Berlin, and he will give us an introduction and some talks about fostering innovation through digitalization. Very welcome, Christian. Thank you, Ernesto. Thank you, Nadia. Uh, yeah, I was invited today to talk about fostering innovation through digitization and our experiences from City Lab Berlin to set a frame to create successful projects in urban, sustainable urban transport. The City Lab Berlin is a prototyping lab where we engage the public stakeholders and the public administration in order to deal with issues of the digital society and urban transport. This is me. I'm a project coordinator at um, uh, the City Lab Berlin for the Free Move project where we deal with the anonymization of uh, mobility data. Mm, short to the framework of the City Lab, the City Lab Berlin is a uh, project by the Technology Foundation of Berlin, and um, Technology Foundation of Berlin is a non-government uh, agency or foundation which is publicly funded and deals, broadly speaking, with um, the digitalization of the public administration. Um, this is pre-corona, but as you see, it's very um, important uh, that the City Lab Berlin is a physical space, an open space, um, where people interact face to face um, yeah, on intangible processes um, and um, um, on, of, of a sustainable transport in a very tangible way um, and a, I would say, human way. In each project, we follow essential principles. A key principle is openness. We promote open data, open software, and open um, software standards, and we also live it, not only in the physical space, but also with all our software developments and concepts that we put out. You can find them on GitHub, and you can reuse them or get inspired by them. Now I want to talk a little bit about the frame that we operate in. Um, oftentimes, we see that the government pre-formulates policy and regulations and that the users have to adapt their life and work experiences onto these pre-formulated um, regulations. And this creates frictions. Um, frictions because the user's um, life experience it doesn't really fit with what is pre-formulated. Hence, the very first thing that we do is to introduce the user's perspective into this process of policy formulation. And this opens up a space for innovation processes, which can then take place at City Lab Berlin. Um, here it's important to notice that the solutions we work on don't always have to be state of the art, but they have to bring in this new point of view and hence create new solution, new working solutions for old problems. Here I brought you three projects that we are working on or that we worked on in order to showcase the different type of projects that we have um, in the mobility section of the City Lab. This is the research um, projects, innovation and optimization projects, and projects of civic engagement. Free Move is a trans transdisciplinary research project where we work with four universities to push the discussion on anonymization of mobility data through new scientific knowledge. PARI is a very typical um, project on optimization of processes inside of the public administration. And last but not least, Shared Mobility Flows is a project where we visualize complex patterns of um, shared bike flows in Berlin in order to create new insights, but also in order to engage and invite people into the discussion. So, if you want to take part in the discussion, you can tweet, it, tweet at us at City Lab Berlin.
Okay, thank you very, very much, Christian. Uh, that was very, very interesting. You mentioned that uh, you have an open space, a physical space. Is it possible to come visit and hear more about the project? Yes. Um, we have an exhibition at uh, the City Lab Berlin. You can uh, find us at the uh, Tempelhofer Feld um, um, in Berlin. And uh, it's a very beautiful building, and we showcase uh, all our projects um, there. So uh, you're welcome to join us. Um, you can, due to the corona rules, uh, rules you can uh, see when it's open or when it's closed. And then, uh, yeah, come and visit us. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm sure we will at some point, uh, maybe next year during the Trends on Climate Change Week, if we ever get to do it physically again. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you so much for now for being here with us. You were the first uh, studio guest, I think, that we had, <laughs> apart from all our colleagues. So thanks so much for being here. It was an honor to have you. And now uh, we move on. We will look at the next country input uh, from Uruguay. We travel all the way to Latin America. En Uruguay, previo a la, a la política energética, la electricidad provenía básicamente de hidroeléctricas y fósiles. ¿no? Esto generaba una cantidad de, de inconvenientes. ¿no? Entre ellas, era imposible prever lo que iba a ser el costo del abastecimiento y bueno, lo mismo en lo que tiene que ver con las, las emisiones. ¿no? Esa variabilidad más el aumento de la demanda que proviene naturalmente del, del desarrollo económico Esto nos condujo a establecer una introducción muy importante de lo que son fuentes renovables eh, no tradicionales. ¿no? Esto fue una elección. Nosotros siempre decimos que para nosotros adaptación y mitigación van juntos. Entonces creo que la gente debería cambiar esa cultura eh, generalizada de estatus de movilidad en el auto. Cuanto más personas se movilicen en vehículos, es más malo para el medio ambiente. Entonces, debemos utilizar el transporte público por el tema de la seguridad vial. Y si logramos que el transporte público eh, sea eléctrico, que sea amigable al medio ambiente, eh, eh, aún mejor. Es un ganar-ganar en cuanto a que los vehículos eléctricos a batería pueden ayudar al sistema eléctrico aprovechando excedentes nocturnos de fuentes no regulables como la eólica. Uruguay tiene una larga tradición de diálogo institucional y político que ha permitido justamente la creación de nuestro Ministerio de Ambiente con un fuerte respaldo de todo el sistema político y de la sociedad en general. Eso también nos permite tener una política clara y contundente en lo que tiene que ver con el cambio climático y la respuesta nacional del cambio climático que también debe ser interinstitucional y abarcar a todo el Estado y toda la sociedad uruguaya. Primero es importante tener un plan de movilidad sostenible. Es sumamente importante porque es el rumbo, es el, es, es el camino donde poder transitar. Después, la importancia de, de tener buenas prácticas en movilidad este, sostenible. Toda acción que implique eh, la disminución de emisión de CO2 y toda acción que implique una actividad física son ya de por sí eh, grandes beneficios y, y son columna vertebral de lo que es la movilidad sostenible. Por otra parte, los cambios tecnológicos siempre requieren un proceso de desarrollo, de fortalecimiento de capacidades en distintos ámbitos y niveles, sensibilización, información, y también requieren condiciones económicas que lo hagan posible. En el grupo de proyecto teníamos ciertas ideas del camino a seguir, pero esto se enriqueció mucho con el aporte de GIZ, tanto metodológico como técnico específico. Y fue necesario planificar una curva de aprendizaje, construir nuevas capacidades, también en, en cuanto a la formación académica y técnica, y hasta en el propio despacho eléctrico, o sea, lo que es la administración de, del mercado. ¿no? Naturalmente no se podía hacer esto sin inversiones y para ello las asociaciones público-privadas fueron clave en la implementación. Y el acuerdo multipartidario 
eh, sobre los principales ejes de la política posibilitó que esta se constituyera realmente en una política de Estado. Es difícil imaginarme en el futuro, pero no me rehúso a soñar. Lo único que pienso es que la movilidad sea no solamente algo que, que nos lleva de un punto A a un punto B, sino que sea toda una experiencia que nos brinde buenas emociones, que nos dé más calidez, que nos haga sentir más humanos, ciudades donde sean mucho más sensibles a la persona y no al vehículo, no a lo motorizado. Además sueño con, con una movilidad que sea realmente accesible para todos. Eso creo que es un gran desafío. Very nice contribution for the Friends of Uruguay, sustainable urban mobility with focus on e-mobility. They told us how they shift through a new energy policy and reconvert the energy matrix to 100% renewable sources base. And this is very much linked to electromobility. And they discourage the use of private cars in order to introduce environmental friendly public transportation. What is very interesting to, to emphasize is that the idea of a sustainable urban mobility based on or with focus on immobility is now a state policy. And this has three elements, political agreement, society support, and a good intersectorial coordination, governance. At the end, a colleague mentioned urban mobility is very much linked with emotions, service, people-oriented. That was very nice from Uruguay. And now it is time to our next guest, that is Mateo. And Mateo will tell us a new, some news about what is coming tomorrow, that is the Mobilize Your City Global Forum on Friday. Welcome, Mateo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ernesto, and greetings to the audience. Um, now, first of all, let me share a couple of words about Mobilize Your City. Now, Mobilize Your City is a global partnership that was established uh, exactly during the same time that the Paris Agreement was signed in 2015 during the climate conference in Paris. And it is led and funded by the European Union and the French and German governments. Now, Mobilize Your City works with uh, local and national governments to support them to transition to inclusive and green cities by focusing on the power of sustainable urban mobility planning and project preparation. Now, we currently work with 65 member cities and 15 member countries um, who have committed to improving, to improving uh, urban mobility for both their citizens and the environment. Now, this fourth Transport and Climate Change Week is very important uh, for Mobilize Your City because it is the first time that we will bring together many of our partners and stakeholders and, and having discussed uh, many of the most uh, pressing issues in urban mobility in the Global South. Now, the highlight of the day will be a high-level conference in which we will bring national and local governments uh, together as well as international organizations uh, such as GIZ, the French Development Bank, EBRD, and uh, the European Commission, French and German governments, and many more uh, actors to discuss all of these issues. Now, what, will be, what we will be discussing, first of all, we will discuss the power of planning to leverage uh, financing to, to, to implement uh, sustainable urban mobility measures. Second, we will also discuss the power of vertical integration between national and local levels as a powerful level, lever to empower cities in this process. And uh, lastly, we will also discuss the importance of global partnerships to support the implementation of the Paris Agreement. We will have also three technical sessions. The first one will be dedicated to the Asian audience and in which we will introduce the Mobilize Your City Emissions Calculator, which allows the local and national governments calculate and uh, evaluate the impact of their mobility measures by building scenarios. Uh, the second uh, session is dedicated to the African uh, community, and we will discuss here the power of digital solutions to modernize informal transport. And lastly, um, addressing especially the Latin American and African communities as well, uh, we will present the four latest uh, tools and knowledge products 
to support uh, mobility practitioners in electrifying public transportation. Thank you very much. Well, Mateo, with all those details, and if everything is happening tomorrow, we will be there. We'll join you Absolutely. in this global forum. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Many Thank you. thanks, Mateo. Thank you. And now it is time to make a virtual trip. We are flying to Kenya, and we will see what ITDP is doing in Mombasa and Kisumu, Kenya. A few years back, the county government uh, decided to invest in uh, walking and footpaths to make the city more walkable. Over the years, the, we turned our city into a car-friendly uh, city as opposed to a, a people-friendly uh, city. Cities have always existed, and they've existed for, for, for people to walk. Um, but then only a hundred years is when we changed uh, our cities from people-friendly and walking-friendly cities to car-friendly cities. So we left the human beings and focused on the machines. And, uh, and, and in that process, it has, we didn't realize that it has taken us 100 years to realize that this is not it, this is not right. We, we've taken away the life out of our city. And uh, so that, that made us uh, think, to, uh, think about it. And of course, we saw what other countries and other cities are doing. And uh, we saw sense in that. When I was a child growing up, and I know many of us still, still have, 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 the same, have, have the same thing in our mindset, is that I used to sit in the car with my parents, and I used to ask, why can't the government make more lanes, bigger roads? Why? Uh, whenever we're stuck in traffic, though. But then when you grow up later and then you find yourself in now uh, being in charge and responsible for traffic management and infrastructure, and then you come to realize that that is not the case. And the more lanes you build, we, we actually we make create a, we create a demand for cars to use the. barabara imetusaidia sana. Juu ingekuwa hizi aziko ingekuwa hapako hivi. Kama mvua ingekuwa imenyesha kungekuwa labda na matofe hivi. Sasa wenye wamejenga hizi at least inatusaidia magari yapitakando na pia watu wanapitaka nani inapunguza ajali na maafa pia.
that was very interesting, and the name was very clever about talking about walkways, red carpet, and the people got the award going through this red carpet, the facility to, to, to walk, to improve walking, both in Mombasa and Kisumu. Public transport service plan and the potential BRT service also was shown in Mombasa and Kisumu, the support of pedestrian and cycling. This is a real red carpet, many thanks. And now that we are already in Kenya, why don't we remain here and see the movie, the video from Kenya. Kenya is uh, seen as a strategic location around Africa. We are located at the heart of Africa. And from Kenya, to go to anywhere else in Africa is about a four or five hour flight. So it, 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 it's a natural hub for international traffic and distribution of people and services and goods throughout Africa. In 2012, uh, the cabinet approved the integrated national transport policy, but we needed to have the approval by the parliament, so we did the session of paper number two to communicate the content of the integrated national transport policy. So we have the two documents, the Integrated National Transport Policy and the Session Paper Number 2. Uh, the two documents provide or guide the development of the entire transport sector, that is both operational and development of the hard facilities, the infrastructure that is. Uh, in Kenya we have uh, several modes of transport. We have road, road transport, maritime and shipping transport, and also efficient transport. We, we currently have eight international airports in Kenya uh, and our airstrips are 491. So uh, our footprint in, in Kenya is quite large. The climate change unit at the State Department for Transport was established in 2017 following the enactment of the Climate Change Act 2016 which required all state departments to have a climate change unit to mainstream climate change issues. So we, the, the State Department for Transport nominated officers to do that function. Since then, there is a lot of focus in climate change issues in the transportation projects and we have had to collaborate with the Ministry of Environment and Forestry to, to incorporate transport actions in the, in the National Climate Change Action Plan and therefore the unit has been following closely the implementation of the actions as contained both mitigation and adaptation. Our vision is to make Kenya an investment hub. And we cannot do it if you do not have um, state-of-the-art infrastructure that are all connected, road, rail, air, maritime. KCA and uh, our vision stakeholders developed uh, as, uh, an action plan which uh, is to mitigate climate change within the aviation industry in Kenya. This action plan for Kenya has managed to save 1,250,000 tons equivalent of CO2 or carbon dioxide emissions. And so we're very proud of, of that effort. Uh, since the initiation of the trucks project, which started in 2017, uh, as KCA, we have been part of the project since it started, where our focal point have been trained in terms of capacity building. They have been trained in different areas, that is in issue to do with emission quantification, climate change proving, climate change reporting, 
and also issues to do with the MLRV. The new NDC reflects transport as a priority sector because transport is also a great emitter of greenhouse gases and the, the ambition is to implement low carbon transportation, efficient transportation system that will contribute to the, the ambition of reducing the greenhouse gases by that 2% nationally. So this was the country presentation from Kenya and first of all I want to greet uh, the colleagues and the people that we saw in the video because uh, Kenya, the National Hub Kenya, is one of the very few that is actually meeting in presence and I'm sure they are watching us now as they are meeting in Machakos to discuss uh, transport and climate change related issues and uh, everything to do with transparency together with my colleagues Herman and Carol. Good morning to you. Um, we saw that uh, Kenya has integrated its, uh, well, transport into its NDC and also into its National Climate Change Action Plan. And if you want to know more about uh, Kenya's progress on mitigation and ad adaptation actions in transport, make sure to check out the Transport Climate Change Annual Report. Uh, I'm sure we can post the chat, uh, the link to that uh, in the chat later. Um, but now we switch topic and we move to a video about the artificial uh, intelligence and a hackathon about that by the uh, German Telekom. And welcome to the AI hack for mobility. We have people, attendees from 15 countries, people from Pakistan, from Nigeria, from Canada, from Europe. It's really all over the world we could reach a higher range that we usually have when we are here at, in Berlin in, at the office. Of course, we have male and female participants. A warm welcome to everyone who is excited to find great mobility solutions. The motto of our hackathon is to find solutions for modern mobility. I very much love the term human-centered technology, human-centered AI. Purpose of telecom is we will not stop until everyone is connected. We want to provide actually you digital access to intermodal mobility and it's in your hand to help us organize sustainable mobility for telecom employees. Our vision at Technology and Innovation is around creating benefit and joy for our customers, diversity and around skills. You're combining future skills with diverse teams. This was our first virtual hackathon in Deutsche Telekom. 15 nations, 9 teams and a lot of great ideas. We had a lot of helping hands behind the scenes in the background. That was a really great and amazing event. See you next year. So that was the video by the Telekom, the German telecommunications uh, company. And I'm very honored to welcome Samoa Fanstiel here. Hi, Samoa. Great to have you on hey. the Transport and Climate Change Week. Samoa is a senior expert on mobility as a service and is here to tell us a little bit more about this uh, artificial intelligence hackathon. Samoa, um, that looked very, very interesting, uh, very exciting. Maybe you can tell us a bit about the results. What are like the solutions that, uh, that people participants of the hackathon came up with yeah thank you for having me so yeah there were a lot of promising and interesting uh, results from the teams they took the approach of gamification to reward reward climate friendly behavior especially i was impressed by our winning team solution gen ai so they they developed an all-in-one mobility app with various features such as bonus points for sustainable mobility behavior. That sounds indeed very, very interesting. Is Telecom using those results of the hackathon in any way? Yeah, because the solution of the winning team fits perfectly to our current project. So we want to provide for our employees, their family and friends, in mobility as a service platform. 
And this mass platform offers access to multimodal mobility via an app, which is fed by real-time matching of travel requests and mobility sources using AI-driven predictions of the best travel part for our users. So we believe this mass platform will be, will be one of the key cornerstones of an environment-friendly mobility system in, 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 in urban and suburban areas. So, and we took already a few of the features of the winning teams in our product backlog and working on this. That is really impressive, uh, really, really cool that you're working on this. Do you know by when this will be uh, finished? Do you know by when you will yeah. realize this? So we, we start our first pilot in the area of uh, the metropole area of Cologne and Bonn. So this is where our headquarters located by beginning of 2022. And then we want to, to roll out this all over Germany because our employees working across Germany and yeah, they want all benefit from such a solution. Great. Um, well, I'm excited for that. Looking forward to this. Um, do you, when we go a bit away from the hackathon, can you maybe tell us what the Deutsche Telekom uh, does uh, for, for climate change? Do you have uh, your own climate goals, maybe, for example? Yes, for sure. So we already reached today our first goal. So all electricity we consumed in Deutsche Telekom worldwide is from uh, renewable energy resources. And yeah, by 2025, we want to reduce our emissions by 95%, and the rest 2% we want to neutralize by high quality CO2 capture projects. And at the end, finally, by 2040, we want to become totally climate neutral across the, role, uh, the whole supply chain, so from the production to the customer. And for this reason, looking on our corporate mobility, we are one of the biggest emission driver within our corporate. And therefore, we are doing yeah, this, we're focusing on this digital access to mobility to offer our employees a need-driven, data-based and diverse mobility service. And I guess my, my managing director, Olga, will tell us a little bit more tomorrow. So, yeah, stay tuned. That's true. Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> uh, Dr. Olga Nevska will indeed speak uh, and give us a little pitch. Um, we're looking forward to that. But first of all, a big thank you to you for having been on the Changing Transport Showtime and telling us about these very, very interesting activities that uh, the telecom is pursuing. Um, that was our last contribution for today. And we are coming now to the results of the poll of the day that we asked you in the beginning. This is maybe also a a good uh, point in time to remind you of the feedback uh, poll that um, you maybe still be able to fill out. So give us feedback on the changing trends about short time. Let us know how we can improve and how you found it. And um, well, let's take a look at the poll results. I will remind what was the question. The post-COVID transport sector will be more sustainable, less sustainable, and change. Surprise, more sustainable only 11% of the collaboration says this will be more sustainable. 33 decided that or suggest that it will be less sustainable. And 55, a very huge amount of colleagues says unchanged. That means that almost 90% are not too optimistic. Perhaps we can contribute from this side, from this space, from the Transport Climate and Change Week, to be more optimistic, we need to push a more sustainable post-COVID transport sector. And after the poll result, we will go to the summary and outlook. Yes, let's take a look at the agenda because, of course, as always, uh, it doesn't end with the changing transport showtime. We have uh, many more uh, things coming up. We already had a lot going on this morning. We had uh, by UNEP a uh, workshop on electric two and three wheelers. We had a webinar on EV charging infrastructure and grid integration. And uh, we, well, we are now in the changing transport showtime coming to an end. Um, but uh, this is followed by a workshop on the question whether zero carbon transport systems are 
utopia or maybe come to reality. But we have a guest that will tell us a bit about that later. And uh, we have the ICA consultation hour that is for delegates only. And uh, well, we hear about hydrogen again. So we have the hydrogen hour uh, once more. And we hear from th uh, different uh, power to x projects about their experiences, followed uh, by an input on sustainable aviation. And in the end, we'll have a workshop on sustainable urban mobility programs. So make sure to stay tuned. All this, of course, always as always followed up by our Latin American uh, regional program. But for now, we want to look at what happens, what awaits us in the next, uh, within the next 15 minutes. So um, let's introduce Urda on stage. Uh, Ora Eichhorst, she is project director of the National uh, Transport Initiative for Asia and will tell us now a little bit about uh, the workshop that she's organizing together with Agora Verkehrswende. Thank you, Nadia, very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to welcome you to our next workshop on decarbonizing transport by mid-century. Uh, rhetoric or reality. This workshop will be open to all and we are looking forward to your contributions. What do you think is mostly holding us back in engaging in more radical emission reductions in the transport sector? And more importantly still, what do you think are key solutions to overcome those challenges? You will have the opportunity to discuss this in regional breakout groups in Africa, Eastern Europe and Asia. And then we will take your discussions back to discuss them with our expert panel. And there we are looking forward to welcome two of the members of the Council for Decarbonizing Transport in Asia that has recently been set up under the NDC Transport Initiative for Asia. This will be Mr. Liu Zhi from Beijing University's Lincoln Institute for Land Use Policy and Glinda Bethan Batrina from Cleaner Asia. In addition, we are also looking forward to welcome Mr. Sudendu Sinha from Nitya Yog. But before that, you will get a glimpse into possible pathways for Germany to decarbonize even before 2050. So stay tuned and uh, let's meet again in around 15 minutes. Thank you very, very much, Urda. Uh, that was very interesting. I'm sure many, many people will join this workshop. And now it's time to say goodbye to you, uh, to the uh, participants from Asia. We really hope that you enjoyed the Transport and Climate Change Week so far. You already heard about the program that we have going on tomorrow from Matteo, so don't miss out on the Mobilize Your City Global Forum. But, uh, well, from Ernesto and me, a big heartfelt thank you to you to your, for your participation. It was a great pleasure to host this. It was a lot of fun. I would have never thought I would ever stand on a stage and I think Ernesto feels the same way but it was great and we really hope you enjoyed it too so thank you and enjoy the rest of your day